I mean, property development is, is crucial to the regeneration of a city. Ultimately, it's about making the best of your assets, whether they are buildings or land. And I think Manchester is definitely trying to do that. It's an opportunity of creating new homes, new offices, new workspace, hotels, everything. And um, the industry is very committed to try and um, find a way to regenerate the city and we've got amazing assets here that need to be brought forward. I think it's also about realising that property development isn't, shouldn't be seen in isolation. You know, each site has a red line or each building has a red line, but that red line um, means something in the context of the area in which the site sits. And it's about harnessing the benefits that that site development can bring so that you know the, the, the catalytic effect of a development of a site is understood. So we're quite often asked to look at frameworks or master plans for areas in which a site sits so that those benefits can be harnessed very particularly for the future. And that mechanism is extremely um, impactful in terms of its regenerative effect. And Manchester's particularly good at achieving that. We've got to think about the purpose of all this and purpose of cities. Ultimately, we're trying to bring forward investment into cities like Manchester and the North West, ultimately to create jobs and security for its citizens. And if we can make a really beautiful, attractive city that where people want to live, work and play, then property development is there to support that political ambition. I think it's um, in terms of the scale and pace that the city's moving forward. Obviously, if we just take a step back and think 25 years, it's a pretty fast track uh, the city has been on since, let's just say, the, the IRA bomb in 96. And bearing in mind that the population has increased from 400 to 65,000 in that time scale. Um, but we're still only really probably halfway through where we need to be. I mean, the regeneration is very much about people in, in our terms, in our view. That drives demand for everything else. And we need to get to a population of around 200,000 people. And it could take another 50, could take another 30 years to get to that point. But the city can accommodate that. And even then, we'll only be at a similar density to central London. And we'll be nowhere near the density of Barcelona or Paris. But it's a sustainable density that we need within the city centre. I think it's important that we understand the city as the driver for the region. Manchester as the capital of um, the region um, drives that economy and allows those, um, uh, the 10 boroughs, the Greater Manchester um, conurbation, the 10 boroughs to achieve what they, you know, the best that they can within that context. And it allows them to um, develop their identity within the whole. The driver is the, is the focus of the development within the city centre, which is the intensification and the density. But I think it allows everybody, uh, you know, the, the various borough, boroughs to, to achieve and to push their, their various identities. I think we've got to think about Manchester as the key tack, attack brand for the North West. I mean, you even see Salford University in Manchester, and that's, that's in terms of its presentation. You know, it is the capital of the Northern Powerhouse. It is the centre of hopefully the levelling up agenda that's going to come forward from government. But we've got to think about um, how the other boroughs can benefit from that. So if we get a really strong, powerful core, then the ripple effect will, will really impact the outer boroughs. And they can retain their green belts. Um, let the population density occur around the city edge here in the, in the brownfield zones that the city has. And, you know, we, we, we create a really attractive, compact, walkable city. And that's the true su sustainable community. And it's really important that that development focus is not pepper potted or diluted because it's that strength of identity that makes the difference nationally and internationally. I think the design standards are not only set by the City Council because they've always been willing to embrace change 
as long as the quality is really key and important and it's assessed at that level. And in fact, um, residents, tenants, they all demand a much higher level now. So, you know, the residential that we're designing has amenities and facilities that we didn't design when designed the Beetham Town. So there's a real demand in terms of quality and in terms of amenity and aspiration. And that's underpinned by the City Council and their drive to increase quality, not just of the built environment, but the public spaces. And we're starting to see um, more pedestrianised linkages down Deansgate, uh, New Cathedral Street, the new public spaces that are being generated, as well as spaces like Deansgate Square that never existed before. They were just car parks. So I think quality of public space, quality of, of uh, built form and quality of, of space that people can occupy, whether they're residential or commercial, are fundamental. And the, and the city has been insistent upon that. Um, and if we can achieve that, then they open their arms and, and look, look to embrace investment and change. I think it really is an evolution of aspiration on all sides, you know, the public sector, in terms of Manchester City Council, what they can demand and actually what people, you know, the individual is demanding themselves. So it's, it's, it chimes quite well. I think in terms of the future, um, we've got to have more of the same. What we mustn't do is be complacent and think Manchester's achieved anything yet. It's, it's work in progress. And if you think 25 years and another 25 years, 50 years in terms of the life of the city is not very much in real terms, but we'll probably need that to create this truly sustainable, compact, walkable city that will be a model um, for post-industrial cities across the world effectively, but it's all about people. And I think what's exciting now is this new wave of generation that regeneration that's happening is all about creating um, fantastic new um, living accommodation, different types of workspace, public realm, making it the sort of city that people want to be in and spend time in, working and playing. Bear in mind it's 30 minutes north-south and 40 minutes east-west to walk within the inner ring road. It's a really accessible centre. You can be anywhere and be at the town hall in 15 minutes walking. Now that to me is a truly sustainable community. I think what's really exciting about working in the North West and working uh, particularly in Manchester is that this is the only true um, public-private partnership that I see existing on the ground. And it's, it's partly to do with the fact that um, the City Council has been and always will be a Labour-run council. You know, 94 of the 96 councillors are Labour. So we've got continuity. We can look long term. That's why we've been able to support the airport, support the universities, get a tram system in, because it's long term uh, ambition, long term investment. And I think what's really exciting is that um, developers see that, they see that continuity, they see that um, confidence that comes out of the city that we will be here to support you. Because things can't just happen in two or three years. The building industry takes a lot longer. So. To me, it's a sort of um, an opportunity to um, embrace that change and support it and to know that there's confidence there uh, to follow through. And as long as the decisions are made around quality, then I think we'll see further and continued investment in this city. And I do think there's a real synergy between the public and private sector, which is recognised actually internationally. We've travelled to MIPIM. Um, with the City Council um, as a Manchester contingent and it is really really powerful as a brand and that public-private connection is really well understood and is not um, apparent within any, within any other international or European cities offer and it, it is about that working together the aspiration for the future and the confidence and actually the transparency of the City Council's ambition and strategy for the future that allows people to take confidence and have confidence in their long-term ambition in, in terms of involvement within the city. So it's a fantastic interrelationship, I suppose, of the public and private sector that, that really should be celebrated in a way that 
you know, it's particularly special, I think, and unique to Manchester and the region. I mean, when you look at the vision and the ambition is, is obviously um, to create opportunity, achieve jobs and security for its citizens. And that's very, very obvious from Manchester's uh, positioning. And we as architects and others in the development community do our best to support that vision and try and create a beautiful city where people can live, work and play. And um, without that vision at the outset, then it would be very difficult. It would all be about watching out for yourself. Whereas I do think the development community have a, have a real sense of responsibility, not just to their own clients, but to, but to the city in itself. I mean, the, the built environment is crucial for our, everybody's future and we all hold immense responsibility in relation to that. You know, we as architects understand that and take that responsibility and, you know, we kind of, you know, that's really apparent to us and we, we register that on a daily basis. I think it, the, the way that the city has positioned itself in terms of embracing change, wanting investment, supporting action, and that can-do attitude that people in the North and Mancunians have, I think has translated and has given the confidence for investment to happen. Um, we've got to see more of it. We've got to see um, more international investment. And that's all about raising the profile of the city as a city to uh, invest in and, and to create jobs within and that there's a great workforce here that can su support those ambitions. So I, I really do think that um, that sort of ambition, commitment, confidence spills out and if that's there and as, it, as it's been said the transparency uh, that if it's good it can happen then um, we see people moving forward on that basis, whereas you know, in other cities, it doesn't work like that. I think the, really, the real strength is that stability and continuity of the civic and political leadership that we've had here in the Northwest, because that has give, cons given consistency in terms of the messaging um, for anybody who would like to or, or you know, feels there's an opportunity here in, in the Northwest or in Manchester. And it's the, I do believe it's the consistency and stability of that message that has been really, really powerful. I think that willingness to embrace change uh, is something that the city has really uh, played on and uh, wants to change because it, uh, what, what, what was the future for the city um, post bomb? It was very unclear. Now it has a, an amazing future ahead of it. But also a, a city the scale of this is that um, in Manchester, the individual can make a difference. So whatever you're doing, you can make a difference to the success of the city. And I think that challenge is something that has been thrown out there. And that's why we see a lot of people really passionate about the city, but also passionate about making uh, Manchester a beautiful and attractive place to invest and work in. But I think it's also important actually to think about the diversity of the city and how that's contributed to thinking about the future because actually everybody's contribution is absolutely critical and important for that sustainable community and city. So the success I think or you know the perceived success obviously we've got a long way to go but is built on that um, understanding and um, welcoming of contribution that it, you know, is, I think is quite unique and uh, particular to this region. I think when you look at the Northwest region as a whole, we think we're really well positioned to compete internationally. We've got some fantastic cities within that region, um, each with their own character, each with their own identity. We've got great towns that are now connected by infrastructure like trams, more and more um, linkages together. So I think if we see the whole of the region, uh, there's no reason why it can't compete uh, for jobs, for investment uh, from around the world. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to think about it as a centre 
um, which obviously has certain cores within it, but each of the towns within the region uh, will benefit enormously, but it just takes time. Um, there were massive assets for this region. We have the countryside 20 minutes away and we have a really busy thriving hub um, 40 minutes away, 40 seconds away in a lift. So we've got everything in the region um, that can compete and we have an amazing workforce as well as the universities and all the other assets that the city and the region have. So it's an exciting place to be and we've just got to continue that evo evolution and change and we've got to maintain that confidence and we've just got to present ourselves as being out there open for investment. But I think it's also a di very diverse region and a very different offers within the different cities. And that's great because actually we need to really harness all those different offers. And, you know, the transport infrastructure is key to do that. And we know that, you know, the tram system, the Metrolink has been fundamental to the su success of Greater Manchester. And that just needs to be reinforced across the region as a whole. The transport infrastructure is absolutely key. And I think, you know, at government level, that's absolutely recognised, although not, uh, not carried through in terms of um, playing out their um, contributions and so on. But the funding needs to come forward for that to, to be able to harness the true ambition and aspiration and actually ability to contribute um, here in the region, the Northwest.